Hi, I'm Hans Wilhelm. Great to be with you. A popular advice to all of us is be yourself. That sounds great, but how many people really know who they are? Too often we confuse our true identity with our ego's identity, with our dreams and wishes and limiting beliefs. That's not who we are. The spiritual world has given us a very clear answer to that question. So who are we then? This is what we know for sure. According to Einstein and Tesla, everything, but absolutely everything, is nothing but energy, frequencies and vibrations. There is no solidity to anything. You and I are fields of energy of various frequencies that respond and interact with other fields of energy. We are all like individual vibrational manifestations, also called divine spirit beings of eternal existence in the great ocean called God or what the scientists call the unified field. As the absolute reality from where we all came is seven-dimensional, it is difficult for us to grasp this energetic power with our three-dimensional mind. Therefore, we give this energy many different names and different qualities to help us understand it. We call it life force, God spirit, the seven laws or powers of God, the I am that I am, the stream of being, the all unity, awareness or simply consciousness. It is all consciousness. As Deepak Chopra puts it, it is consciousness seeking experience through a specific organism. It is pure consciousness morphing itself into infinite forms and phenomena. Everything is consciousness expressing itself in form, color, fragrance and sound. That is what creation is. And you and I are individual manifestations out of this stream of consciousness, also called light ether or God spirit. We are divine and eternal cosmic beings. And these spheres of light are the pure heavens, our homeland. The only reason why we are not there anymore is because we have misused the divine gift of free will. By progressively negative thinking and acting, we have removed ourselves further and further away from our home, the seven-dimensional reality, the highest vibration of love. I explained it in detail in my video, Lucifer's Rebellion. So what happens to us every time we incarnate as a soul into the three-dimensional material universe of time and space, contrasts and cause and effect. To make the point very clear, I will use a little humor. Here we go and wake up as a newborn baby to a very lovely couple. The problem is that our new parents are followers of the chicken god tribe. All members of our family and everyone else around us believe that God is a big chicken in the sky. They wear symbols of chickens, they have special chicken dress codes, they perform chicken rituals, eat special chicken food, and once a week gather in the holy chicken house to sing chicken songs and worship the chicken God in the sky. As we wholeheartedly trust our parents, we hardly ever question their programming and in no time we make their beliefs our own beliefs. We see the world through the same conditioned set of chicken glasses as our parents do. Even in situations where our tribe tells us to go out and kill other people who don't believe in the chicken god, we follow their orders with deep conviction because in our mind there is only one god and that is the chicken. Think of how many wars have started this way because of intense tribal identification. And as we have never questioned the beliefs of our forefathers, we will make sure that our children also believe in the chicken god in the sky. And so the myth continues generation after generation. Collectively we have fallen for a total false and temporary identity which has nothing to do of with who we truly are. But is it just our religious tribe that can give us a false identity? No, it may as easily be our race, nationality, political affiliation, social or cultural background, body shapes, gender politics and many other isolating concepts or teachings that distorts our true origin. 
These are merely temporary costumes that our soul wears during our short sojourn here on planet Earth, depending where and into which society we were born. Hasn't Shakespeare already stated that this Earth is only a stage and we are merely actors here? If we identify with any of these temporary costumes and believe that this is who we truly are, then we have totally forgotten our divine origin, which is far beyond such earthly limitations. We have exchanged our divine heritage with our ego's heritage. So why are we so obsessed to identify with this worldly shallowness? Our craving for identification and feeling special often comes from a deep sense of loneliness and separation. Here on earth we feel separate from divinity and also from each other. Therefore, our ego clings to groups or tribes that can give us an emotional rush of importance, belonging and power. A clear sign of our deep insecurity is when we try to feel special or superior to others and begin to openly flaunt our tribal identification, like our nationality, religion, race, sexuality, political affiliation and so on. We try to convince others about something that we are obviously still struggling with ourselves. We do this in the hope that others will respect us, love us and accept us, because if they do, then we feel validated and might also begin to respect, love and accept ourselves. But it never works. Christ said, those who do not know themselves want to be confirmed in the world, thereby creating cause after cause. Once we recognize our ego's manipulation, we can begin to question and investigate everything that we thought to be our identity. We might discover that almost everything we have believed in are concepts that we have adopted from others and never really questioned. We probably never ask, is this really true? Is this who I really am? Is this the one I want to be? Once we focus on our true spiritual identity, we begin to distance ourselves from our ancestral and other cultural, political and racial values, rituals, traditions, beliefs and influences. To move back into a higher vibration, closer to our true home, we will have to question and drop all that binds us to this world and which is not in alignment with who we truly are. Because, as I said before, this world, or planet Earth, is not our true and eternal home. It is only a school for us souls to grow, as I have outlined in my video The Amazing Earth School which also explains why our sojourn here, spending less than 30,000 days, is but a fleeting moment in our eternal journey. When we begin to rediscover our true essence, we come to realize that we are not defined by our physical body, beliefs, conditioned patterns, opinions, emotions, and not even by our personality. What remains when we shed these worldly identifications is our core essence, an infinite being existing beyond the constraints of time. The spiritual world gave us a very simple but effective affirmation that we can try out. It says, I am in this world, but not of this world. It removes us from our daily little dramas and lets us look at our challenges as a detached observer, a perfect tool for self-recognition and making better choices. When we reclaim our true identity and remember who we truly are, we are far more open to receiving the divine love which is our true heritage. And from that abundance, we can then give love and help to others without wanting anything in return. If you're interested in these spiritual teachings, I suggest you may want to take a look at the website of the Sophia Library. You can also find more videos on my website, lifeexplained.com, where you can subscribe to the newsletter. See you in my next video. Don't forget to subscribe.